Good afternoon. It's a pleasure to be here, and thank you very much to NASDAQ for having me here. Uh, first of all, just a couple of words um, about the, this being a CEO to investor discussion. Um, I'm, a, I'm the, uh, one of the board members of the management board of uh, Baltic Horizon. Unfortunately, today, our CEO, uh, Taramo Karatum, was not able to, to make it to Riga, although we are very often in Riga together. Um, because we travel in, around the Baltic countries. I'm actually based in, uh, in, the, in, the, in, in, our, in our Vilnius office. Taramo is in the Tallinn office. So Riga is often a place we come together. What I'd like to do is um, uh, give you an, an overview, uh, overview, first of all, of Baltic Horizon uh, as such. Um, it's one of the um, several funds that the company, the fund manager, Northern Horizon, manages. Uh, Baltic Horizon is um, specifically a fund that was in, invented basically to invest into, into top-line commercial uh, real estate, uh, mainly into retail and office space. Um, and in fact, its history comes from the time that we, were, we used to in, in make these investments uh, through funds, uh, through a type of trust, which were time-limited, usually a seven-year fund or a ten-year fund and therefore you would invest into the property get from your investor capital and then you would divest at some point. Where Baltic Horizon is different is, is that it is a, an evergreen fund. It, uh, it means it doesn't ever close down. Um, it's, it's one of the first, I think, probably the first type of fund in the Baltics to, uh, to do that. Its history comes from being one of those time-restricted funds, the, the Baltic Opportunity Fund, uh, which started back in 2010. And we had, uh, had built up a, a relatively small portfolio of, of, of assets at that time. And then in 2016, decided to, um, to take it live and take it to, to, the, uh, in, to the, the, the larger investment community and get it listed. And uh, it was successfully, I, uh, we had a successful IPO in 2016, in the, in the beginning of summer of 2016, on the Tallinn uh, Stock Exchange. And... Following that, uh, after, the, after good placement of um, new capital, we were able to invest more into property. And then, uh, uh, knowing that there was, a, there was a high demand from investors, uh, not just retail investors that we were able to get from, uh, from in, in Estonia at that time, but also from our Scandinavian investors, who are extremely important uh, to the, this whole market in the Baltics. And we were able to do a second listing um, six months down the track in November of 2016 on the Stockholm Stock Exchange. So we're, it's not a rare thing in the international markets to be double listed, but uh, I think in this region it's not that common. Um, so we can say that the Baltic Horizon is one of those rare beasts which uh, is listed both on uh, the Thailand Stock Exchange in NASDAQ and also in Stockholm. So Baltic Horizon, what it is, is uh, it's, it's um, what we call like a REIT, if you're familiar with the term uh, real estate investment trusts, especially from the States or from Australia or Canada. Um, this is a, a type of uh, fund, and an alternative investment fund vehicle, which is created in Estonia, and we're using that legal format. Um, so it's like a REIT where all the investments go into real, into real estate with the idea that the the, the regular cash flow coming from those investments goes back straight to the investors as dividends. And so th we have created this fund to be a, di a very diversified and low risk um, type of REIT, listed REIT. Um, people can come into the investment by through the stock exchange rather than becoming direct investment into the fund. And that's how they exit as well. If they want to see most investors want to come in and then they want to go out with their profits. So in this type of fund, um, it's done through buying and selling units on the stock exchange, except for when we do, um, when, when we raise capital, we raise capital through new, uh, a new SPO, uh, a public listing or a public offer, uh, or, or through pri private placement, which I'll talk about a bit later. We are doing that now. So its long-term focus is basically to invest into high-quality properties in the capital cities of the Baltic countries, so that being Vilnius, Riga, and Tallinn. And at the moment, that's, that's all Baltic Horizon invests into. 
just because we want to, to make sure that we're getting the, the highest quality properties. And how do you do that? It's basically having the very strong tenants in your buildings. And we, we are talking mainly when we're looking for a good solid investment, we're, we're looking for t uh, buildings which are occupied by good solid tenants. And in this part of the world, I think most of those tenants are from the Nordic region, some international of course, and of course we don't uh, say that we don't invest into properties with local tenants, but those local tenants have to be of high class and, uh, and good standing. Um, the, the portfolio, basically we keep it very conservative uh, overall because uh, we, we've been through crises before, we know what banks are like. Uh, generally, if you, if you lever up too much property, uh, you know, lever up too much in your property is up to 80 or 90%, you know what in a hard time what that can lead to is that the banks will just take your property away. But moreover, we want to be sure that we have skin in the game and that uh, we provide 50% of the equity into the, into the investments and we uh, look for 50% uh, of the, uh, the leverage uh, from the banks at this stage. And we've changed that a little bit uh, as well. I'll, I'll, go, I'll talk about uh, our bond issue that we did earlier this year. So the, at the end of the day, it's a, it's a high dividend capacity fund, meaning that the investment into the fund is there more for the actual sustained cash flow that the investor can expect to get from knowing that they're invested into property with very good tenants and well-paying tenants, which are always coming in, and the dividends that we can extract from that, and we have been doing so ever since the IPO back to two and a half years ago, is now creeping up to uh, an annual return of 8% cash dividend on equity. Um, the, the dividends are also paid out on a quarterly basis so that there's a regular flow that comes to the, uh, to the investor. And, um, well, the entry and the exit, the entry is usually through, if you want to come as a smaller investor into the fund, you come through the stock exchange, either in Thailand or in, in Stockholm for our Swedish investors, um, and then you exit by selling from, the, from that market. Um, what's important is that, that because we're such a um, conservative fund, I mean, a lot of people who invest into the stock market believe there's, there's gains to make straight from the, the, um, the uh, ups and downs of the stock price of the, of, of, the, uh, of the company or the fund that they're investing in. What we're doing here is creating a fund which should, should not have major movements up and down in the, in the stock price, but it's for the, for the dividend cash flow, so it's a, it's a very conservative bet. Currently, our, um, the fund has um, a net letterable area of more than 100,000 square meters. It has a, a property value with 12 properties that we have um, in the fund um, of close to 250 million uh, euro. As to, today, it's 243 million. We said two years ago that our goal was to grow this fund uh, to a 1 billion euro fund uh, within five or six years from that time. From where we started when we had this, uh, the Baltic Opportunity Fund and it turned into Baltic Horizon two years ago, it's moved very, exp it's grown exponentially from there. Um, so we still think that as long as the markets are, are good and there's good properties to buy, that we can still grow um, sufficiently well uh, in the next five or six years. I've gone through a little bit about the history of the fund, where it started from, where it's gone through, but what I'd like to focus on, because a lot of people listening to this will, will already have invested maybe, maybe into Baltic Horizon, is more of the recent developments and what has hap actually happened in the last 12, 12 months or so. Um, apart from the fact that we've been constantly paying out these dividends on a quarterly basis, and that's been very regular, you can see on the bottom part of the chart, if you're looking at the chart, and these uh, dividends have been actually growing slightly every, every quarter. So we started out in the beginning of the year paying out 2.3 euro cents uh, for what, that quarter and building it up to just now an announcement that we're paying out 2.6 euro cents. And that is quite sustainable from the numbers that we see. And it comes really from the, only the cash flow that is generated from the fund itself. It doesn't come from any, any capital gains that is done or made, uh, if, if there are any made through selling properties. It's purely the cash flow. 
When we uh, raised capital, which we had uh, done so, the last one major raise, uh, capital raising was done at the end of last year, um, most of that capital was, uh, was uh, brought in so that we could invest into uh, a very solid in, uh, property in, in the middle of, middle of Tallinn, which is the Postemaya shopping centre. Um, admittedly, it was uh, bought at quite a low yield, um, but that was done on a, well not on purpose, but it was done on the basis of, of, of full understanding that why are we buying such a property in the middle of Tallinn? It's a shopping centre. We have also next door to it another, uh, uh, if you can say, a retail outlet called Coca-Cola Plaza. So our intention long term is to build these two properties together and, um, and make it a, a much bigger complex and a much more interesting complex for the whole city of, of Tallinn. So that's what we're doing with that one. Um, in the middle of the year, we, uh, we went into board, we bought some uh, blocks of land next to one of our shopping centers in Vilnius. Uh, it's called the Domus Pro Project. Um, and the idea there was, it was to, to make an example of what we can do with the properties that we have invested into, where there are expansion ideas or some actual, actual extra value that we can do as, as management in any, any, any one of our properties. And this is one of five of those projects. Postemeyer and Coca-Cola is one of them. But this one next to Domus Pro, where we have a, a, a shopping center currently today, uh, together with uh, a, a, a small office block that we built last year, uh, fully occupied. We have this land plot now next door, which we have intentions to, to, uh, to build upon and to make uh, more office um, buildings in that region, I think, which is very necessary. So this is the sort of thing that we add in to the fund on a very low risk basis to create extra value. Uh, you'll be happy to hear, being this is the Latvian audience, that we, were, we successfully acquired the Allen K Center in Skanste uh, just this year. We closed it in, uh, in August. Um, very happy with this sort of property, which uh, provides you an, ex an, an excellent uh, sustainable rent cash flow on, uh, on a yield of 6.5%. Um, you have very solid tenants in there with ex exigent services and LNK themselves. So uh, you can see that we have solid tenants in a solid building. What else can I say from this one is that um, this year we, were, uh, we weren't raising any capital from the beginning of the, of the year, but we went a different step. We went into, into bonds. and. Uh, we issued a, a 30 million euro bond successfully in April, which um, changed the makeup a little bit of our uh, equity and debt structure, where, well, the bond is a, a slightly more expensive thing to have, uh, but it's there to replace some of the bank debt that we had. Um, and therefore now we have um, a more diversified equity debt structure where we have equity uh, of, of the portfolio of about 40 to 45%. We have debt from banks at about 45% uh, and we have 10%, 12% uh, involved from the bond itself. Uh, this year later on, we've already announced just recently in the last couple of weeks that we are targeting more capital, um, but not going down the public route this time. We decided to go through the private placement route um, because it's for some very specific projects that we have in mind and it's uh, something we can do still this, this year or flowing into the beginning of next year. So that's what we're planning to raise another 20 million capital very soon. So what's our background, uh, or our breakdown, I should say. In geographically, um, we always set out to be very balanced across the Baltic countries, and particularly in the, in the capital cities. And we are today like that. Uh, Estonia taking the slightly, slight biggest lead in, out of the three, and Lithuania coming a, slow, uh, a close second. Latvia is slightly uh, smaller in our allocation, therefore we are looking more at the, uh, the Latvian market right now to, to, to as we grow, to increase in with, with the Lat Latvian side of business. And uh, hopefully we'll, we'll be able to announce something very soon, which would be very interesting for a lot of the Latvians. Um, and on segments, I said that uh, before that our major st uh, structure is basically in the retail and office commercial segments. Um, and we're predominantly like that 50-50. There's a, a small 6% there in leisure, but that's uh, just a, 
there's almost practically retail, but that comes really from the, 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 the cinemas at the Coca-Cola Plaza in Thailand. What's uh, very important to us, and, and I hope that's come through what I've been saying before, is where our income is coming from. The, the cash flow it comes from very good solid tenants. And also, we don't want to put all of our eggs in one basket. So we want to make sure that we have a good diversification of tenants uh, right across the board. And I think we have that. If you look at the 10 largest uh, tenants that we have across the whole portfolio in the 12 properties, then then you end up uh, with this uh, sort of picture with 46% of the income coming from those top 10 and the rest coming from all of the, the smaller tenants that we have. And what's more important is that any major anchor tenant doesn't hold anything more than 10% of the portfolio, just in case the tenant has problems. So I'm happy to say now that we've got the, the, the portfolio to a much bigger size, that we've been able to achieve that and uh, G4S SD is the, the biggest tenant we have, and maybe that's because one of the buildings that we have in Estonia, in Thailand, is an actual single tenant building by G4S. Um, close second behind that, and for the same reason it's the single tenant, uh, is the uh, Latvian State Forestry, and let me test my Latvian here, the uh, uh, Latvias uh, Valdsmeji, I think I got that right. And um, that's our second biggest tenant across the portfolio, but that's also because it's in a single um, tenanted building, which is in, on Vainodas number one. And apart from there, your, your regular suspects, uh, the, the shopping centre and grocers and uh, other big um, companies. Just briefly on the financing side, um, when we look, uh, when we do investments, when we, we raise the capital for these investments, we also finance them on an individual basis. So we go from every SPV. Um, and that's why you see these dot points, uh, if you see it on the chart, then you'll, you'll understand that uh, each, each uh, finance uh, is done on a property by property basis, which they all have their own maturity levels and so forth. Happy to say now that we've been, been able to refinance and set up our financing structures across the board such that we don't have the first maturity now and until for, no, for another three years. Um, not to say that we don't keep on looking at our finance and, and talking to the banks all, all, always, but uh, that just makes it a little bit easier to, to, to do other things within the portfolio. You'll, you'll see also that uh, on the bond side, that when we raised 30 million euro at the beginning of this year, that that has a certain higher cost, and the coupon rate for that bond uh, was at 4.25%, um, which is slightly higher than the, the usual financing costs that you have on other properties. But the, the, still the blended cost of debt, if you take in the bond in, uh, as well with that, is only at 2.3%, which I think is, a, is a, a good achievement for the fund to go forward. Um, LTV stay, remains low within the 50, 50 to 55%. Uh, the fund rules of the of Baltic Horizon actually allow us to go up to 60% loan to value on the financing, and that includes uh, the bonds. Uh, but we try to keep it as conservative as possible at 55%. Um, and what's important, yeah, the, the weight of debt maturity is, is uh, more than four years, so we still have uh, a good balance with, with, the, with the maturity levels. Now, very briefly on the financing, I'm looking at the time. Um, just a, a couple of points from the latest results from, from, from Q3. A lot of investors will be looking at these numbers sh sharply all the time, I would imagine. Um, if for Q3, when you compare to, the, to this time last year, what you can see, of course, is that the, the uh, net operating income has, has uh, quite dramatically increased from what it was last year. But that, of course, is to do with the, the additional properties that we've taken on board. On uh, the investment value, we've now moved from, from the end of last year from 189 million to 243 million euro in asset value itself, and it's largely due to the, uh, the, the uptake of the Postemaya shopping center, the LNK business center, and some land acquisitions, and some revaluations re in the properties uh, at mid-year. We do uh, revaluations on a, on a uh, biannual basis every half year. 
The um, NAV of the fund is uh, sitting at nicely at 109 million euro. This is a bit less than half of the, the, the total GAV. It's grown slightly from where we were last year, but mainly because it's really a re reflection of how much equity is in the, in the actual fund. There was a, a, a from the revaluation of properties, you get some increase there. And we also had, when we did the post my deal at the beginning of this year, we did a, a, a combined small pl private placement with the sellers so that they invested some of their own funds into the, our fund as well at the same time, not just selling the building. So that's a, a nice process and a nice way to get the, the sellers of buildings involved in your fund. And I think that's a, that's a good way to go forward. Um, the, the NAV numbers uh, shown here, uh, basically we, we compare two things, the NAV of uh, any, any particular month, and we're sitting today at roughly about 1.38 euros per, per unit. Um, when we look at the, the EPRA NAV, uh, which I think is always an important number to look at because it, it discounts or takes away the, uh, uh, the tax or the deferred tax uh, issue from all of your properties, uh, which is something you did just need to book in, in by law under IFRS rules. But really, when it comes to practical terms, when you sell a, a property, you will probably sell the, the company itself, so that tax uh, never gets, never matures. Uh, therefore, the, the real value of the units is more like 148, uh, one euro and 48 cents. Just the last slide, that does the last issue I wanted to talk about, which takes us back to the, to the listing, um, that we are listed in both Thailand and in, uh, in Stockholm Stock Exchanges. And you can see that uh, the, these graph charts are now looking at the numbers or the, the liquidity of the units is actually growing as we're going along. Um, the last uh, year has shown I think st stability at this sort of level where we are turning over uh, a million units um, uh, per month, uh, and which is uh, probably could still be a bit more, but I think it shows that it is quite, quite highly liquid. It's also important to see if you ever look at, and we had this report from, from Swedbank uh, Equity Advisors, that when we look at the Baltic countries across the board, across NASDAQ, uh, in terms of companies and funds and whoever else is on, listed on there, that Baltic Horizon is actually uh, comes up to now to the top five of all of these entities in terms of liquidity. Um, of course, taking into account both of those both of those exchanges, and that liquidity is an extremely important to us because the investor feels that then there's an, an ability to get in and out as as much as they would like. So with that, I would. Uh, Say thank you and sit down next to my friend Ivar's here. Thank you, sir. So just a quick uh, quick question. Uh, we're obviously running uh, a little bit short of time, but the the overall position here, uh, just understand that you've got uh, both, uh, let's say, Nordic, Swedish and also uh, Estonian smaller investors mm -hmm. uh, on board. Uh, and that's been the most uh, efficient way for you to actually uh, yeah. cater for them. But the the actual sh the the units are fully fungible. Uh, you can theoretically exchange one for the other. Is that that's correct? exactly right? Um, mm -hmm. We uh, at the beginning when we did the secondary listing in Stockholm, we were a bit nervous about the idea of how transferable they are mm -hmm. from one exchange to the other. Um, being that Thailand is uh, traded in euros. Um, Stockholm is traded in SEC, that causes its own issues, but um, the, just the way that NASDAQ works and the, the, uh, the interrelationship between the various branches is, is, uh, it has shown that it's, uh, it's not at all a difficult thing to do. Mm. Um, mm. We have to also say that um, the fund today has about four and a half thousand investors. Um, uh, the, you know, the bigger ticket ones are the ones of the institutional investors that we look at directly and try to get them to, to invest in the, the, in the larger, larger tickets. Um, but why do we have so many, why we have so many investors I in the fund at the moment, which is, which is fantastic, is because that we are on a retail market and that um, the, the and especially in the, st in, the, in the Estonian and the, the, stock, uh, the Swedish markets, that, that they understand that this is quite easily tradable. Mm. 
units between each other and and across the board. Good. Well, then uh, we wish you the best of success in the in the private placement. Thank you. Yep. Uh -huh. And uh, thank you very much.